this is definitely not uh, where we wanted to uh, start this video um, but I'm in the local hospital near uh, Thunder Hill it's about 40 minutes from the track um, I had an unfortunate situation happen today um, uh, first race of the day I uh, I ended up getting some brake fade and then uh, with I think it was the last lap was it the last lap mm, is a fourth lap out of six. Fourth lap, um, I came into the last or the first corner, turn one, and uh, I was going, you know, real super fast on the R one, and came into the corner and uh, went to go to the brakes, and the brakes just stopped, or the brakes didn't stop. Uh, the the lever, I went to pull the lever in, and it uh, it wasn't doing anything. And it ended up locking like this, and it wasn't slowing the bike down at all. So basically, it put me in a situation where I was doing like 100 some miles an hour. I don't really know how fast I was going at the time, but you come into turn one wide open, and then you go to the brakes, and you're supposed to make the corner. Um, but yeah, I went to the brakes, there was nothing. Tried pumping it a little bit, nothing happened. I immediately started to try and slow down with my rear brake, but unfortunately with, with how quickly everything was happening, uh, there's a, a wall. I had to come in, you know, I was flying in. If I didn't lay the bike down and crash, because a sudden stop basically could kill you. So I knew I didn't want to do that. I knew I didn't want to get anywhere near that wall. I laid the bike down pretty early, and as soon as I hit the dirt, I started cartwheeling end over end multiple times. I smashed my head pretty good a couple times. Ended up on a dirt bank upside down with my feet up above my head. I sat there and laid there for what felt like eternity, really, because uh, <laughs> it took forever. And it was like a hundred and some degrees out there, so I was literally just getting baked by the sun while I was waiting for everything to happen felt a lot longer than it is. I ended up snapping my femur really good. I have to get a rod put in tomorrow morning. Most likely the rod will stay in for the rest of my life. Other than that, other than the femur, I feel pretty good. My whole body's super stiff and, and really sore. I've got some bruising um, and stuff. Obviously from flipping that fast, I mean, you're gonna be pretty pretty stiff and sore. But um, you know, it was just an unfortunate situation uh, where the brakes failed and nothing I, I could really do about it. Sorry to the team for uh, wadding up the bike. The bike is absolutely destroyed. Uh, my team worked extremely hard uh, to make sure everything was ready to go on that bike and and fluke deals happen. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to getting this rod put in, seeing what recovery time looks like for me. But yeah, I just gotta say thank you to, to everybody at the track, you know, that got me in the, I ended up taking a helicopter ride, um, you know, cause the, the hospital um, was like an hour away from the track. So they wanted to get me out of there as fast as they could in case I had any internal bleeding because uh, there's a big major organ, right? by your femur and if that would have gotten cut or whatever I would have lost a lot of blood really quickly so luckily luckily God was looking out for me for sure in in this uh, crazy unfortunate situation um, but yeah I'm, I'm super thankful that that it wasn't worse and uh, that I made the decision to throw the bike down and not smash into the wall so who knows what, what could have happened then but yeah I just gotta thank the Lord for looking out for me uh, you know, going wide open on a 1000 and not having any brakes is a a really, really scary situation. And, and you know, anything could have happened. It, you know, I'm glad I made the decision I did and, and, and only came out of it with a broken leg for sure. We're going to keep you guys up to date on everything. And we're going to um, follow along the process of uh, surgery. And, and we'll give you Marissa's take on stuff and my take on stuff. and. Uh, show you guys through the whole process of everything that's going on. I'm Sincerely, if you can tolerate that, we're not going to move you. Um, you may not be able to tuck it, that's fine. Okay. Well, if you have an ankle fracture, I'll come find you. If you don't, I won't come find you. You won't be finding me then. <laughs> Alright. So they came in to take x-rays to make sure that his ankle wasn't broken. They put Caleb through a lot of pain when it wasn't necessary. He knew that nothing was broken. I get it that they had to make sure, but they left his foot sideways, which then left me to straighten it and make it all better again. Alright, it's currently 9.16.
Caleb slept for about two and a half hours. Now he's eating dinner. Yeah, because they like they put me halfway in, or whatever. Like the bed was like halfway. But yeah, it sucks because you just had to look up at the ceiling the yeah. whole time, and I'm like, this is an expensive ride, man. Yeah. I wish I could like enjoy it or something. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> See out the window at least. Just yeah. blue sky the whole time. <laughs> I I didn't, honestly I I mean I knew we were in the air because I could feel it kind of like. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Well, I don't want to bother you guys, but um, it's all good. good. Oh, good luck in surgery. Thank you, man. Thank I appreciate it. Great. Buddy. If you need anything, let us know. That's For awesome. sure, thank you. Be far away. Okay, do you know what time the surgery is going to be? No, I don't. Okay. I think he has three. You see the first one afterwards? Number four of six. Yeah. Okay, so the, let's see, uh, probably about 12 or 1, maybe 2 o'clock. It's plus or minus, so it's, there are lots of variables. Okay. And any variable can change it. Alright. So, okay. It is 8. No, 7.45. Um, they woke us up about 4.45, gave him some more pain medicine, I think, or a muscle relaxer, and just got him laying down. I think we got, fell asleep at 1, got up at 4.45. Jason and his mom came over, hoping to get to surgery soon. We're hoping he can go at 9. It's kind of the call. But they have to do them, um, they have to like fit them in in the open spots that the surgeon has. So that kind of sucks that it can't be a scheduled one so that we know what time. Problem is, I've been laying in this bed for so long that my lower back and my legs are all like locking up. Mm -hmm. But you were in a pretty big yeah, accident, right? Everything, right? Everything's going to be sore, yeah. yeah. But it could affect your back, that's why. And that's why I guess that's not you can wiggle your feet on this side. Can you push down with this foot? How about pull up? Yeah, it's definitely sore. What's this at? He was 37.5 on his temp, so he probably needs to be pretty fast. What was the stat? I think it was 97. Nice. So. Yeah, my lungs feel so good. You got a little, um, those called that you GoPro? mm -hmm. yeah GoPros. Those are pretty cool. You can't you can't photo in the hospital, but um, are recorded in the hospital. But yeah, we we're just recording up till it's light. Yeah, so you've been racing a while. And yeah, I've been racing since I was four. Oh my gosh, really? Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So you're gonna put your mouth on that. Like, yeah, straw. You're gonna suck in big deep breath as much as you can. Nope, you're gonna suck in harder through the straw. <coughs> yep, up, 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 as high as you can go. <coughs> What's like, what's the goal? Well, I'm gonna, once she's off the computer, I'll figure it out okay. for him, and we'll, yeah, because there's a calculation based on his height and age, um, and then we just want you to get 70% of that. The fact that you're coughing, though, tells me that your lungs are totally collapsed. Totally collapsed. Totally collapsed. Right now. So you've got to open them up and take bigger breaths. <coughs> Problem is that she just gave me that, I think. Yeah, it's going to make you really sleepy, too. It's yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're waiting on surgery. We're supposed to go in at 9, but um, I'm... Uh, I'm a fill-in or whatever, so it's not really guaranteed when they can get me in to to get a rod put in my leg. Um, they're having me do this air thing because uh, when you're laying
laying down for long periods of time, your lungs um, get weaker because you're not taking as deep a breath or something. Mm -hmm. So, I gotta do this thing. They got this other thing on my left leg here that pulses so I don't get blood clots. And of course, they got my weight hanging down there. Traction, that's called traction. traction. So that way, uh, my bones don't pull together. on Monday. Caleb crashed yesterday at 10 in the morning. He just went into surgery. I got some really terrible footage of that. And then I Ubered to the hotel because there's nothing I can really do at the hospital, so I'm just going to shower. I haven't washed my hair since Wednesday night. But um, I'm just hoping surgery goes well. And yeah, I'm going to go shower. Hopefully I'll feel better after. And then probably go back to the hospital as soon as possible. Even though they said, originally they said it would take 90 minutes from making him fall asleep to waking up. But then other doctors said two to four hours. Other doctors said a couple hours. So I have no idea what it'll actually be. But yeah, I feel disgusting from sweating. And hospitals just make you feel like. So, gonna go shower. See you guys after. All right, I just got out of the shower. Um, I want to say thank you guys to all the messages. There are so many. Caleb will try and get back to them. I'm assuming when he's out of surgery, he's going to be pretty bored for the next day or two. Actually, it might be longer than that. I wanted to run you guys through kind of what happened. I'll just start at the beginning. It was like 10 a.m. He went out for his first race of the day. It was race number two. It was on the 1000 lap one two lap three went by and I see him go across the front straight and I look away and then I was gonna most of the time I just look away and I look for him through turn three just to see like where he is and so I see the yellow flags come out and I knew he had just gone by but I was like whatever all of a sudden it's a red flag and then I was like well he should be coming through turn three soon and then, so I start looking for him, and he doesn't come through turn three. And I was like, and that was Caleb. And they threw the red really fast, and so I kind of knew it wasn't a good situation. And I actually didn't even know that it was turn one. I thought it was turn two, because I didn't even, like, know that he was down in turn one. But I looked behind me, and one of the crew guys was there, and I was like, that's Caleb. Like, Caleb crashed. And so I run over to the hot pit thing, and I was just like, what's the number of the bike? And like a minute goes by and they're like it was 251 and I was like oh my gosh and so they rush all the ambulances over there medics crash car like everything and then all of a sudden the crash car goes around the track to the outside because the bike had actually actually flipped over the wall so anyways I hear the news that he is okay and like responsive or whatever and so I was like okay that's that's a good time and then it was we're gonna fly in the helicopter and I was like the helicopter like that's typically means like not good and so the first thing I one of the first things I thought of was I was like John go buy the flight insurance because they make you pay like 60 bucks for one flight or 120 for two different flight care providers for like the year and so you pay 120 bucks instead of like 30 or $50,000 helicopter ride to the hospital and so he goes and does that I try he makes me run over there and fill out some paperwork and the lady kept making me repeat like his address and his like birthday and all this stuff and I just couldn't handle it and I was like here's a wallet pay for it whatever and I was like I gotta go and so I ran back out there and the helicopter landed and then um it took quite a while 
but then I got the news that it was just his leg and I was like okay that's like I'm like it's just it's just a leg right and so I was like well what hospital are they going to take him to and they wouldn't tell me or they wouldn't even know until they're in the air to clear with the ER that like they had an open spot for him and so I run back over I couldn't find his wallet but it was in his backpack I run over grab his shorts and his t-shirt and his phone and I go and hop in one of the crew guys rental cars and I had to drive 50 minutes by myself to the hospital I knew freaking out wouldn't be like good for anyone <laughs> and so turned on some like rap music on the way there and tried to just keep myself calm for the 50 minute drive I did fine I like FaceTimed my mom's and called his dad so that like I just had company and so I got there had to wait in the waiting room for a little bit because he was getting x-rays and then they brought me in to see him and it was all okay <laughs> but it was scary but he's alive it could have gone a lot worse i'm gonna head back to the hospital right now he should be almost done with surgery i'm just gonna keep holding it together but i feel better after my shower so feel clean ready to go ready to take care of him for the next few months i'll see you guys at the hospital since everything went so smoothly i can let him put full weight on it right away oh okay yeah. all right so he'll get up with um, physical therapy and uh they'll probably start working probably tomorrow or so on okay. Him. okay okay and if you're driving the, the long immobilization you want to take kind of frequent stops every two three hours just get up crutch around, walk around, okay. and get the blood flowing to the legs, okay, okay. to help prevent those blood clots. Yeah. Good yeah. Thank you. You bet. And then you we know what they were saying, a sacrum was cracked, so I'm assuming it wasn't too bad because now they're saying you can put full weight on it? Sacrum, way, way down, is like your tailbone, so okay. it's, a, it's yeah. a non weight bearing portion. Okay, great. It'll okay. hurt to sit is about, yeah. is about it. Okay. You might want like one of those little like old person donuts that yep. you know. Yep. Yeah. All right. It'll it fit. You now with that fracture fixed, he'll be able to kind of wiggle himself around a little bit more to a more comfortable position. Okay. All, All right. right. Good deal. Other Thank questions? You, you bet. Thanks, Doc. Yeah, appreciate it. All right. Take Thank care. You so much. Good job. Yep. You bet. All right. Yep. So we got some good news from the surgeon. He came out. Love the surgeon. He was uh, pretty boisterous and uh, very talkative. But he said that uh, he put a rod right down the center of the bone, which is really good. He said it went well. And uh, he said he's going to be able to put uh, full weight bearing on it right away. Um, big thing right now is he's going to be coming out of recovery, going up into the room in about an hour. And uh, they'll start physical therapy. And physical therapy will determine when we can get him back down to Laverne. And then from there, figure out how we get him home. So knowing Caleb, he's strong, he's Hello. tough, and he's going to do good. Surgery went great, but we had a really tough night as Caleb didn't have any feeling from his waist down. Find out all the details next week on KD51.